Hey everybody, okay, let's finish up section 1.1 by learning a new vocabulary word about angles. The new word that we're going to learn in this section is the word coterminal. Now think about that. Co is a prefix. What does the prefix co mean when you attach it to any word? For example, co-worker. Well, a co-worker is somebody you work together with. Or the word cooperate. Cooperation, that means to work together. So the prefix co means to work together. A co-terminal angles are angles that work together. And the way they work together is that their terminal ray will land in the same exact position. For example, let's draw an angle, say that's 30 degrees. So, when we put our vertex point, very good the origin, when we put our initial ray, that's right, the positive x-axis. If we're going to draw an angle that's 30 degrees, what quadrant would the terminal ray fall in? Well, 30 degrees is between 0 and 90, so the terminal ray would fall in quadrant 1. And we would show that counterclockwise rotation by putting our arc and labeling that 30 degrees. Now, let's say I want to draw an angle that was 390 degrees. Again, let's draw that angle 390 in standard position. So we'll put our vertex point at the origin, put our initial ray on the positive x axis. If I'm going to draw an angle that's 390 degrees, we agree it's going to go through one complete rotation, because a circle is how many degrees again? Very good, 360. Side goes 0, 90, 180, 270, 360. So 390 would be in quadrant 1 also. The terminal ray would fall. Because if this is 360 and we add another 90 to it, we'd be at 450. So 390 degrees, your terminal ray would land also in quadrant 1. We would show that rotation. Remember, we are starting here at the initial ray, going counterclockwise around one full swoop, and then here. Now, let's think about this. If I start at zero degrees and go completely one rotation, that's 360 degrees, a circle, right? So if this is from 360 degrees, how many more degrees do you have to go to make 390? Very good. You go another 30 degrees. So what I want you to notice is if we draw a picture of a 30-degree angle in standard position and a picture of a 390-degree angle in standard position, their terminal ray would land in the exact same spot. And that's what we mean by co-terminal. That's why it's very important now when we draw angles, we put the arc to see the rotation of how many times. Now, there's many angles that will land in the same exact spot as a terminal, uh, as a 30-degree angle, where the terminal ray would land in the same spot. So let's think about that. We can add go around counterclockwise 360, but also we can go clockwise backwards 360. So if you think about it, let me get a different color. If I'm here, here's my initial ray, and instead of rotating my terminal ray counterclockwise, I rotate it clockwise, and I put it in quadrant one then that angle wouldn't be positive, that angle would be negative. So if I'm here and I rotate backwards, I didn't go a complete rotation, so it's not at 360, it's at negative 330 degrees. All three of these angles, 30, 390, negative 330, are all coterminal angles. All of their terminal rays land in the same spot. How do I know this is at negative 330? Because if I went all the way around, how many degrees would that be? 360. So I know from here to here is 30 degrees. Does that make sense? I hope so. Now, do we always have to draw a picture to show that angles are coterminal? Do we physically have to show that land, those terminal rays land in the same spot? No. There is a, there's an algebra rule right here. If this angle is 30 degrees and you want to find an angle that's coterminal with it, well, from 30 degrees to 390 degrees, what did we do? We added 360 degrees. 
because we went around in one rotation. If I'm at 30 degrees and this angle is negative 330 degrees, well, I didn't add 360. This time I subtracted 360. So the rule is to find a co-terminal angle because their terminal ray is going to land in the same spot, it's like going around in a circle. A circle is how many degrees? 360. So to find a co-terminal angle, you either add or subtract 360. Does that make sense? All right, let's try a couple of examples that are like your homework. So if you look at your notes at example 7, let's do A, C, and E. The directions say to find a co-terminal angle of least positive measure. So they're being very specific. Coterminal, as soon as you hear that word, you think of how many degrees? 360. We're going around 360. But they want us to make angles that are positive. So if I start with 41 degrees, would I add 360 or subtract 360 to keep the angle positive? That's right. I would add 360 to this. And that would give us 400 one degree. This angle, if I draw an angle that's 401 degrees, it would be in the same position if I drew a 41 degree angle. That's why they're coterminal. I, if I have an angle that's negative 56 degrees and I want to find a coterminal angle, the question is, do I add 360 or subtract 360? Remember, they want on this one the angle to be positive. Well, I would have to again add 360. And this simple arithmetic, yes, you may use your calculator so you don't make an arithmetic mistake. So negative 56 degrees plus 360 degrees is 304 degrees. If I draw an angle that's negative 56 degrees, let's think about that. That would going back would be in quadrant four. If I drew an angle that was positive 304 degrees, I would rotate counterclockwise. That terminal ray would also land in quadrant four. Okay? Look at this one. This angle is negative 5,281 degrees. I want an angle that's coterminal with it, but it's got to be positive. So am I going to add or th subtract 360 to keep it positive? Okay, I'm going to add 360. Now the question is, is adding 360 just one time going to make this angle positive? Absolutely not. So let me give you a minute or two. Get your calculators out and figure out how many times would you have to add 360 to 5,281 to make a positive angle. I'll give you a minute. Okay, let's see how you did. Well, if you did this correctly, you would have to add 360 degrees 15 times. I'm going to use my calculator to watch my arithmetic. 360 degrees 15 times would be 5,400 degrees. And if I add that to negative 5,281 degrees, that would give me 119 degrees. If I drew an angle that's 119 degrees, where would my terminal ray land? Very good, in quadrant two. So if I drew an angle that was negative 5,281 degrees, I would go around and around and around 15 times, and it finally that terminal ray would land in quadrant two also. So there's a way of figuring out where the terminal ray lands without having to actually draw the angles. All right, let's go to example 8A. The directions for 8A say, give me a positive and a negative coterminal angle. So they want one of each. So if I start with 75 degrees, to get a coterminal angle that's positive, I would add 360. So again, so I don't want to make a mistake with my easy arithmetic, that would be 435 degrees. And to get in a coterminal angle that is negative, now I will subtract 360 from 75. So 75 minus 360 would give me negative 285 degrees. So 75 degrees, if I draw that angle in quadrant one, another angle can be drawn that lands in the same spot is 435 degrees. And then a negative angle that would fall in the same spot is negative 285 degrees. All right, last thing, let's sum up the last part of this chapter by taking a little of everything. 
It says, on number example nine, says, given this ordered pair, this point, draw me an angle in standard position, and then it says, find the distance. So just to recall, we're going to plot this point. Now remember, we're not using graph paper, so we're not looking for an, an accurate plot. We just want to make sure we're in the correct quadrant. So we know the x value is positive 2, and we know the y value is negative 2 square roots of 3. So what quadrant is x positive in, but y is negative? Very good. That would be quadrant 4. If you go over to the right 2 and down to 2 square roots of 3, that would be that ordered pair. That's where that point would be plotted. So they want us to draw the angle in standard position. So I'll put my vertex at the origin. I'll put my positive, my initial ray on the positive x-axis. My terminal ray is going to go through that point, And we're going to rotate. Now we don't know the actual measure of that angle. So the Greek letter we're going to use to represent our unknown angle is theta. Okay, we don't know the actual measure. We don't know if it's 30 degrees or whatever. So we drew that. That's the picture drawn in standard position. Now the question says, find the distance between this ordered pair and the origin. So this is just a good review of some college algebra skills. So here is your origin, and we know the origin, if we write it as an ordered pair, is 0, 0. And we want the distance, what's another word for distance, everybody? Length. We want the length of the distance from this point here, from this point here. We want to know how far that is. Now, again, we can't take out a ruler and measure that in inches or centimeters or anything like that. What we can use from algebra is our distance formula. And if you remember, your distance formula is the change in x squared plus the change in y squared. That's how I remember to read it because I know in math the word change means to subtract. Because think about it. You go to McDonald's, you buy a Happy Meal for $4.50, you give them a $10 bill, they give you back your change. Well, what do they do? They subtract. So we're subtracting the x's, we're subtracting the y's. Just to recall, it doesn't matter when you use this formula, who you label x sub 1 or x sub 2, just be consistent. <coughs> I'm going to label this ordered pair x sub 1, x sub, y sub 1. So I'm going to label the origin x sub 2, y sub 2. And then I'm going to do my substitution. So distance is, according to this formula, 0 minus 2 squared plus, according to this formula, my y sub 2 is 0 minus my y sub 1 is negative 2 square roots of 3 squared. Now this becomes nothing more than arithmetic because you're doing orders of operations. You know your famous phrase, please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. Do the order according to that. P means please do what's inside a symbol first, a grouping symbol. So we have a set of parentheses here. We have to do what's inside of it. So 0 minus 2 is negative 2 squared. We know 0 minus negative 2 squared to 3. We know two negatives make a positive. So that's really 0 plus 2 square roots of 3, which is 2 square roots of 3 squared. Now we're still going to do what's inside, so we're going to do the exponent. Negative 2 squared and negative times a negative is a positive 4. We do not need a calculator to do 2 three square roots of 3 squared. If we go back to our algebra skills, 2 square roots of 3 times 2 square roots of 3. You multiply the numbers on the outside. 2 times 2 is 4. You multiply the numbers inside the radical. Okay, the radicands. Square root of 3 times square root of 3 is square root of 9. But what is the square root of 9, people? The square root of 9 is the number 3. So this becomes 4 times 3, which is 12. So now inside your square root for the distance, you have 4 plus 12. Remember, you still have to work what's inside first. So that gives me the square root of 16. And we all know 16 is a perfect square, and the, the square root of that is 4. Now, distance should be measured in inches or centimeters. Because they don't give us any units, we just write the word units. So the distance there is 4 units. Just to make sure you understand, any time throughout this semester in trigonometry, something from algebra or geometry is going to pop up that you should recall, which means I expect you to know it. Okay, that finishes up section 1.1, all about angle measurements.
We're going to see in the next videos how to now apply some of this information. All right, have a great day.